Hi, today I will show you how to prepare a fecal transplant enema at home. Um, it is a method that is low cost, very easy, and highly effective. We have been doing fecal transplant on my daughter for the past nine months, and 24 hours after the first enema, all of her symptoms disappeared. Um, I should note that she was on medication at the time, and her flare was um, pretty much under control, but they, she still had some lingering symptoms. Uh, we ultimately took her off of the very strong medication she was on, and now she is on a very low-risk maintenance medication, along with two fecal transplants per week. Um, we did start off with five consecutive days of fecal transplant. I thought that this would um, be a good thing to share with you all. Um, I'd like to show you just how easy it is to prepare at home. So first, my supplies. Um, I take a magnesium complex to loosen my stool. You'll see that my stool is pretty um, easy to work with. Uh, also, I feel um, that when you soften your stool a bit, you don't have to blend it as much. And some people are really concerned with the introduction of oxygen into the stool sample um, because it can kill some of the bacteria in there. Then I have a hat. We call it a poop hat, and this is where I put my sample. Um, it's just easier that way. I don't think you need one of these, but I'm not going to have one. Um, a disposable enema bottle. I use these saline enemas, like a fleet enema that you would buy in the store. Um, I do not mix my stool with the solution in there. Um, that is designed to flush your system out, and in a fecal transplant, you want to be able to hold the enema in for as long as possible. I dump out the solution um, that comes in the bottle, and I rinse it out two or three times with distilled water. And the chemical, well, it's not really chemical. Um, what I use to mix the stool with um, for the enema is just 0.9% sodium chloride or saline. Then I also have a, a measuring cup, a plastic spoon, and a metal strainer. You just want to make sure that your, the, the holes in the metal strainer are not too small um, so that it takes a really long time for the stool to strain through. And you don't want it to be too large because you want the pieces um, that you want left behind, left behind in the strainer. Now, you don't have to use a strainer. I just, um, I didn't want any solid pieces in the enema when my daughter was inflamed because I didn't want anything that could potentially irritate her colon. So we just strained it out. Then we also have a, a smoothie blender that you can just buy for like $15. I'll show you how we do it. I take the blender, and I don't measure anything. There are protocols um, that have you measuring stool and saline, but I just eyeball it. I try to make mine kind of thick. Some people use Metamucil to thicken up their enema, but I just figured that I would add more poop to make it thick. I think the theory behind the thickness um, is that it's easier to hold in if it's thicker. So I just I use, I, mean, I use a lot of stool. I feel like the more bacteria, the better. Um, fecal transplant is sort of viewed as the ultimate probiotic, so I figure I want to just put as, as, as much poop as I possibly can. So let's see, I fill it up. Let's see. Probably to about 175 mLs. Um, at the end of the day, I only use um, what is here four and a half, about four and a half ounces of the slurry to do the fecal transplant enema. But I figure you know some gets left behind in the strainer, and then I just pour some saline. I more than cover it. Um, you can always add more if it's too thick, but you can't really take the saline away once you do it. So you just kind of have to play with it, and you know it really actually does depend on how. Um, what the water content is of the stool. So, and I just cover it up. I put it in the blender, and what I do, I just, I pulse it. Um, I don't really whip it in the, in the blender for a very long time. I do it about five pulses. Um, and again, that, that has to do with not wanting to introduce too much oxygen into the mixture and not wanting to, dis, not, not wanting to disrupt the bacteria too much. So I just... And you can see, see it's sort of like a smoothie that's getting a little bit soft, but not too soft. 
I mean, you can do it thicker than that, it's fine. It just takes, it just, to me, it just takes forever for it to go through the strainer if you do it, if you do it a lot thicker. I just take my plastic spoon and I strain through. So again, there are so many ways of preparing an enema. Um, there just aren't any videos out there yet. And this way is extremely, extremely simple, I think. And it doesn't take a lot of time. It takes, I think, probably less than 10 minutes to prepare and less than five minutes to clean up. And the administration of the enema takes about, I don't know, 30 seconds. People who go off of all of their medication after doing fecal transplant, um, we have decided to keep our daughter on a 5-ASA for maintenance um, just because, well, I don't know if it's doing anything, but I'm too afraid to change anything. Um, as you know, um, especially if, if you have a child, inflammatory bowel disease um, can be really, really scary. And, um, our daughter was in a flare for seven months before we tried fecal transplant. And once we got her into remission and off of the really scary drugs, we just decided to leave well enough alone and continue doing what we were doing um, to try to maintain her health. And so far, um, it has worked. And so we are incredibly thankful for that. Okay, I'm sure I have plenty of slurry in here. Um, the milliliters in the bottom is 133 milliliters. I have over 150 in here right now. So what I do then is I've got my slurry. I just pour it into the end of the bottle. Now, if you decide not to strain it, um, strain the slurry out. There is a little, there's a rubber stopper in these disposable animal, disposable animal bottles. Um, there's a, there's an X in there. You can take out that rubber stopper and if you get a better flow. Um, I haven't had to do that because we don't leave any solid pieces in there. And what I do is um, I squeeze the air out because my daughter does not like when I squeeze air into her. So we take out all the air, um, close it up, and then we have our enema. What I do is I have my daughter lie on her left side. We used to have her lie on her left side for a little while, then get up um, on a, sort of on all fours with her bum up in the air for a little while, and then lie on her right side for a little while, and then lie down in front of the TV. We would put a movie on for her um, so she could let the fecal transplant enema sit and sort of um, just let it sit there and help her hold it in for as long as she can. Now, um, we've been doing this, it's almost nine months, and um, she will do a handstand against the door, or um, she will do nothing. I will just have her on her left side, put the enema in, and she gets up and goes about her day. 
Um, it's so easy to do this. I would do it every day for the rest of my life if I had to do it to keep my daughter well. Um, fecal transplant has truly been our miracle and hopefully it will be yours. Good luck.